Hi, everybody. My name is Natalie Gee, and I'm going to be moderating this talk back with the Queen's team. For our blind and low vision attendees, I'm a white woman with blonde hair. I'm wearing a pink short sleeve sweater and have glasses, and I have a large bookcase behind me. Um, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, but I first wanted to start with producer and director Faith uh, Musenby. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us, Natalie. My name is Faith Mosambi. I'm one of the producer directors on Queens. I'm a black African woman with dreadlocks, gold leaf earrings, wearing a brown blouse um, and glasses. And I've got a blurred background because I've got a keyboard. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it forward to Vanessa to introduce herself. Uh, hi, I'm Vanessa Bellowitz. I'm an executive producer on the show. And I have got pale skin, matching me beige hair <laughs> I'm wearing a black dress um, and I apologize I've got quite a messy background um, with a fireplace behind me and I'm going to pass it over to Sophie. Hello my name is Sophie Darlington I'm one of the series directors of photography on Queen's and I am a 57 year old white woman with silver hair Big glasses. You can't see me standing up, but I'm six foot. And I've got a wall of my partner's books behind me. And I'm now going to pass you to Chloe. Hi, everyone. I am Chloe Sarosh. My name makes me sound more exciting than I look, I am afraid. <laughs> I am a white woman with pretty crazy blonde curly hair. I am merely days away from 40 at this point, And I am in a very nondescript corner of a white room. And I'm the showrunner and the writer on Queens, I should have said. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks. Um, Queens, it's just like um, nothing we've really seen in this history um, space. And I wanted to start off by um, just asking how the series came about and how this all female creative team behind Queens was assembled. Should I take that one? Um... The series came about actually from uh, a, a very serendipitous conversation that I had with uh, another female, um, senior female at National Geographic called Janet Hanvissering. Um, I'd actually spoken to Sophie Darlington and Justine Evans, who are the two top female cinematographers in our industry and within the very top best cinematographers, I hasten to add, um, about their special areas. Um, they both have filmed many, many animals, but they specialize in filming. Justine has done a lot of night filming and has filmed hyenas. And Sophie has filmed an awful lot of hours with lions. Um, and we thought it would be quite fun to do a kind of matriarchs meet, um, these yeah. two great species meet in the crater which actually became the first show of the series so I pitched this as a one-off and so why don't we actually fe uh, feature the queens behind the camera as well um, and um, Janet in that moment said we should make a whole series and I looked at her and said well surely it's been done I mean it's obvious we should look at matriarchs and female power in the natural world it, it must have been done and it hadn't and and that's really how queens yeah. was born um, but at the same time we thought it was a fantastic opportunity to showcase female talent within the industry and hopefully build and develop more um, and that became the sort of mantra and the mission of the series um, and rapidly we brought on Sophie into that mission and Justine and Chloe and then from there Faith and the whole thing kind of grew into a team as we were saying of you know probably over 100 people um, in terms of cinematographers and production team, and then even more in the field that helped us achieve the series. That's incredible. The series it's set in Alaska, Mexico, Central America and Africa. What were the biggest challenges or hurdles that you had to overcome to execute such an expensive project? Well, it takes a long time to make these series. You know, we yeah. spend... We spend over a year in development really before we even turn a camera on trying to find the stories and the best places to film and we work mm. so closely with scientists and the people in the field that know the animals best um so it's a lot it's a lot of research and a lot of planning and we have a phenomenal team that gets us to the places that we need to get to um mm. and then, but you know sophie sophie knows what it's like to film in these countries i mean it is um 
it's one hell of a job for sure. Well, you've got a cast, haven't you, that never turn up on time. They can't follow a call <laughs> sheet. They're dreadful. Right. Um, so, you know, first find your cast. Um, but, um, yeah, it can be incredibly challenging. I mean, we worked through... In one of our locations, Ethiopia, we had a civil war in the middle of the, you know, breakout, which obviously was dreadful for the Ethiopians. And um, we still managed to get a film, a really beautiful film, The Mountain Queens, the Ethiopian wolves and geladas out of it. But also, Faith, you know yeah. what it's like. It's it's so it it presents un, unforeseen challenges every day. Mm, for sure. I mean, because we've got those challenges and then you've got nature and um, climate change. That's a big one. Um, as Chloe mentioned, we do all this research um, to go at the right time. But then with the state that the world is in right now, um, you go to film on behavior it doesn't happen because it's too hot or it's too cold or it's too wet. Um, and then we also had the pandemic, which mm -hmm. um, I think was one of the, the markers that defines a series because we pushed right through it. You wouldn't even know that we filmed oh. this during the pandemic because we didn't let that stop us. So wow. many challenges. Faith, can you talk a little bit about the importance of documentary projects really collaborating with local female professionals in the wildlife space? Mm -hmm. um, so th these kinds of shows have been made for years and years and years, and um, the, the teams that primarily make them are of a demographic that don't represent the areas where they're filmed. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, that that means that when you're watching this, you're, you're kind of seeing something from one perspective, not to mm -hmm. say that it's it's wrong. Um, it's just it's different. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, we all agree these are conversations that happen quite a lot on the team. Um, when you have diverse voices and you're including people from the area where these animals are, you get this rich um, tapestry of voices. You've got different perspectives. Um, when, you know, in an industry, when you're doing something the same way, it may not be wrong, but it can be a bit um, monotonous or I'm not going to use the word boring, but pretty soon it becomes predictable. But then when you're using different perspectives, um, different voices, it looks and feels different. And it's there's something to be said for including people. I I want to be one of the voices that's heard um, when content about animals in my country is seen. Um, and I think it's that that's one of the things that Queens was so good at, at giving a platform to and elevating and just being collaborative um, for for the local filmmakers, but not just that, but for women in the yeah. industry. That's a whole other area. Um, Vanessa, you've been in the industry for a long time and women practitioners in this are, are few and far between yeah i've been i've been working i'm ashamed to say i didn't say my age but i'm very happy to i'm 53 and i've been working in natural history for over 30 years mm -hmm. um on nearly exclusively all male shows by myself i would be just be a sort of lone female i'd occasionally get to work with you know legendary female cinematographers like sophie and justine and it would we'd sort of glimpse each other and then Passed by, um, but there was literally a handful of women. And as I became more senior, there were fewer and fewer. Um, mm. That that was something when I was fortunate enough to start my own company, Wildstar, with my husband. Um, something we both felt really committed to, to change. So having the chance to do this with Queens um, and this, you know, incredible group of women who have become ambassadors in their own right, and that's what's so exciting is to see this. It, it's it's mushrooming. It's growing. Each woman on this panel is in turn got their own initiatives. Is spreading the word. Has mentored. Um, and, and so the baton has been passed. Um, and, you know, we call it the Queen's effect. Um, it's, it's real. It's, it's changing the industry as we speak. Um, and that feels, I feel really good about that. You know, I, I was fortunate to come through and it, I, I cannot say in any way that I had anything like the challenges that many of the women that we encounter and, and have helped on this series. Um, so to be able to pass that uh, privilege back really and and give some of those opportunities that I've had to others um feels fantastic I'm really grateful that Nat Geo gave us the chance to do this yeah absolutely and I wanted to ask Sophie too what was it like being a mentor for you because I think I read there was like five percent of wildlife filmmakers are women um 
Oh, you know what? I think it was even worse than that, Natalie, before. Oh. Um, I remember when I first started, myself and Justine, I didn't even know about Justine, but I think there was less less than one hand you could count the women 30 years ago when I started. Wow. I even went to my first um, wildlife film festival with a cameraman badge because there wasn't a camera woman one. <laughs> wow. Um, so um, it's been, the mentoring has been without a doubt the biggest joy of my career to date. Being able to work collaboratively, uh, collaboratively, as Faith was saying, working with Faith and a bunch of Kenyans in Kenya for the first time, all Kenyan, it was so exciting for all of us. And I think we got so much out of it. And I think that, as you said, Faith, the, the stories were just so much richer. Faith, you and Selenge, um, you know, we no one else oh, spotted yeah. that elephant and that incredible story in Ep7 um, behind the Queens. And it, it's just, it brings a tear to my eye when I even think about it, what you, you know, what you brought to that show and brought mm -hmm. to Savannah Queens. Yeah, and, and I think it's because there was, um, the, there were researchers we were working with in Amboseli who I was able to speak to in one of my languages. Um, and we were able to have conversations and um, I was, I, I think there was a freedom in the fact that, uh, and we this doesn't make it into the, the series, but they went to school with my mom's sisters. So wow. there was a, there was a connection. Um, we're able to have conversations. I was able to, to ask them all kinds of questions that I probably wouldn't have been able to ask any other research groups. Wow. And they were open with me, probably more open than they would have been if they were working with someone else. And then you discover new information because you're asking mm -hmm. questions that um, you may not ask because they sound silly, but I I just had this freedom with them. And through that, you know, there's this whole story that blossoms from it because, um, you know, my world is expanded. I'm learning about elephants. Uh, it's just uh, absolutely unbelievable in the mentorship. Um, I, I don't think, and the women here know how I feel about all of them because they're all, they're all my mentors. Um, but being able to have that access, it's just, it's unheard of because mm -hmm. people don't have the time. I mean, what we were doing, we had this remit from National Geographic. We expected oh, to sorry. produce a, a premium show of a certain level. Um, so it's not like we had the bar lowered for us and, you know, Vanessa and Chloe and all the, all the leaders just made room for us to be mentored. Uh, and I can never say enough good things about that process. And yeah, the, the fact that we were allowed to do that. We worked with, um, a team of fantastic men as well, actually, because, you know, there are many men that have had the experience in some in areas that we we women have not had the opportunity to have and the men that joined our team were all extremely willing to help train um other women yeah. up as well so it was as long as they, when they found out they didn't have to wear skirts that was warwick who did the <laughs> he went, do i have to wear a skirt and we were like warwick no you just have to go out there and share your genius um, which he did you know, incredible yeah. <laughs> chloe why do you think now is um, like, I don't know if the right time is the best way to phrase the, the question, but why, like, now is it so important to have a, a history show that's about these female animals and the sisterhood that they have? Well, I, I, there's a there's a couple of levels on that. I mean, we all believe that this show should have been made years ago, and we're all very grateful that it wasn't, and we got to make it. And now <laughs> yeah. we're extremely grateful. There's also the science. You know, science scientific study is looking through a different lens, and it is looking at female behavior in the natural world. There was always this very alpha male skewed lens in which mm -hmm. we looked at animal behavior, and we now know that that is just not the case. That animal mm -hmm. societies like ours are nuanced, and there are phenomenal female leaders out there. Um, some gentle some not so gentle as queens <laughs> show and i think we're yeah. all we're all desperate to see that there are different forms of leadership and what mm. what what female leadership looks like and and mm. it is broad and it can look like a lot of different things and i think queens we always intended it for be to be badass and entertaining and broad and to bring in a new audience and to appeal to people that want dramatic storylines and great characters um but at the yeah. heart of it is at the heart of it is science is 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 real animal behavior and to take inspiration from the natural world um for us is inspiring every day in those in those edit suites um and on location it was it was a huge privilege to spend time with those animal queens for sure 
Yep. And right. some of the action is just extraordinary. I mean, forget it. You know, Tyson Fury and Uzik this weekend, the, the heavyweight mm -hmm. action you see in the thermal sequence with the lions and the hyenas like socking it to each other. It will uh, take your breath away. The the action and the different leadership. It, I learned so much that I didn't know during this series as well about all the animals. It really is. It's trailblazing. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, and, it, and it was a huge risk, you know, to, to make right. a big series with loads of pressure, you know, to do something that's female led in this space, to make a really big glossy show that would bring in a big audience and to say, right, we're going to purposely not film the kind of things that people come to these shows for when we're not about hunts, we're not about fights, we're not about the big sexy flowing manes and the big teeth and the kind of male things. We're going to look at the slightly drab looking female on the side. <laughs> And is this behavior, yes. is it going to feel dramatic? Is it going to deliver? And every single day it delivered. It was just extraordinary. We laughed, we cried, we couldn't believe what we were seeing and we couldn't believe how it resonated with our own personal experiences as women. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was, it's been a hugely gratifying thing to do. Um, yeah, at times as Sophie says, pretty awful as well. I mean, when that hyena cub was murdered by her own <gasps> aunt. Mm. And uh, oh you know the, the, the sequence you see is is not all the footage that we have. You 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 know it it was oh that was Vanessa wasn't it hard to decide what we show yeah. and what we don't of that moment? It was pretty yeah. graphic, but but also a, graphic a huge time. privilege. Yeah, what a privilege. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many times my jaw dropped. That was definitely one of them. Um, and also when then the mom sort of isolates herself away from the group, you know, she's grieving, obviously. Um, and there's like a lot of parallels, it seems, to our own society. And I just wanted to see like, what was the biggest thing that stood out to all of you about these female animals and the world that we sort of live in too? I, I I think for me it was the way that there are so many different ways to lead and you take I'm I'm an elephant like a deep love for elephants and watching you're just going to leave it as I'm an elephant there so <laughs> I am an elephant yeah no but I've got grey hair and that's it I'm an elephant I never forget except uh -huh. yeah um but but watching those elephant families and watching the way that wisdom is passed down and just the the subtlety um there uh, yes that for me. Wow. Mm -hmm. For me, I'd have to say it's it's the lions and the calculation that goes into into what they do. Because sometimes you see them and you think, you know, they're just victims or um, they're you, essentially kind of uh, they just respond to their biology. They don't think things through. But then when you All see, right. yeah, the females, uh, the females cub get um, killed, and then um, she decides, you know, for the survival of the cubs, she really needs to sell it to the sky that he's the father and it's something we saw play out and I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen it. And then you see it happen and you're thinking, surely not. Like he, <laughs> he must know those aren't his. And then he, <laughs> nothing happens. Yeah. That's incredible. And it's, it's calculated. It wasn't, you know, like yeah. random behavior, the things that happened, the mating, all of that, along with the sisters coming in and helping and helping sell that um, reality to him. Yeah, it's so smart. It's it yeah. really is. So smart. Yeah. Oh um, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I love me, oh, um, yeah, no, go I was just gonna say, I think for me, one of the big themes of the series that really resonated with with many of us was that push and pull of being a mother and a leader. Mm. Um and I think you know, stories like Tar, um, the Ethiopian wolf, who, you know, she appears pretty brutal, but what a phenomenal queen. She's brought her pack back to health, but she then has to face this horrendous decision, you know, where she's basically got to let her, her daughter go. Um, and you can see that she's she's obviously conflicted, but it's, it's you know, a theme that you see playing out. And I think mm. many of us <laughs> struggling as sort of mums also trying to do uh, leadership roles um, can identify with. So mm -hmm. some tough life, love sometimes as well. Um, yeah, that's what's been so interesting, isn't it? Watching people see these shows and everyone reacts and has a favorite show and a favorite character. Yes. Where the animal experience speaks to their own experience. And that's just been magic to see. So we hope that would be the case. We wanted to give a broad range of stories and experiences and ages. But um, it's been amazing to see people really latch onto a show. And it's always a different show. And so many <laughs> men and so many men, which mm. has been lovely coming to us saying, I see my daughter, I see my my mother, my wife, my sister, 
Um, and I want them, you know, their families, they want their families to see it, to see themselves in it as well, which I, I think has been really wonderful. We desperately wanted to make this an inclusive series. It, this isn't about catering to a niche audience. This is it, this should feel inclusive for everybody. And I think the sort of styling of the show, we tried to be more contemporary. We use commercial music. Oh, yeah. And Chloe's writing style is much lighter. It draws on drama. Um, it, it, it should feel like something that everyone can switch on to and enjoy. And the tech, yeah. Vanessa, the tech we used from the drones to kind of allow you to travel with the wolves in that incredible terrain in the Ethiopian mountains or the Tom's beautiful work with the six axis gimbal where you're literally part of the hyena clan as they're running. You know, you feel like you get so engrossed in using all those techniques um, that were borrowed from the drama industry to tell more rounded stories to make people feel more like they're there and more emotional about it all because they're so dramatic the stories so dramatic i mean we haven't even started on gloss of the blooming bee <laughs> no absolutely i wanted to ask because the commitment to the cinematography is incredible on an epic scale but also on these intimate shots where an animal seems to be staring right down the barrel of a camera looking at us can you talk a little bit Sophie about um your decision making with regards to the technology that you use the cameras um and how those choices really support you in being most prepared when you go out to shoot we were really lucky Natalie because we had the backing of Red who really supported us through Red camera systems throughout this whole process and without them we would not have been able to do as much as we did with the mentoring as well as the storytelling oh, wow. but very much our our, our gear um, was based around what how did we want to tell a story and mm -hmm. for instance that extraordinary scene with the thermal with the lions and the hyenas battling it out in African Queens where they're having that full-on boxing fight yes. um, we, we chose a thermal camera because we didn't have to rely on moonlight whereas with the hyena and elephant in the Savannah Queens episode, we sh were able to shoot in color. So really the stories dictated what kit we used and we mm. we threw the kitchen sink at it. We wanted everybody just to be as engrossed in the stories as they can be without being aware of the tech because mm. once you get taken out of it. So I really love the way all of the, the, the entire team pulled together and it feels, I'm so, so, I'm so glad you said it, you know, you felt like you were pulled down the lens because yeah. that's very much... What we'd hope to do, we hope to yep. film, capture, but not be in any way invasive. You know, it's it's about respect for me, I think, and for right. all of our team. We do it because we love these animals. Yep. And, the, and the reality is with the, the kit we have, we're a very long way from those animals. You may think that they're looking down the lens at you, but because the size of these lenses, they're, they're a long way away. So um, 20 um, time zooms, you know, it's, 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 it's the whole point is it, let them ignore you. Yes, yeah. And this was touched on briefly just before, but Chloe, um, the style of this show is unlike anything else. Like, what were the conversations you had about the tone and the aesthetic of the piece that you really wanted to achieve? I think, well, one, we were given, I mean, I've been hired many times in my career to make something different. And never does anyone actually really mean it. <laughs> it gets slowly eroded through production and you end up making something that's very much like everything else that's out there. But Nat Geo were hugely supportive in letting us run with something that felt, sounded, looked different. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had, you know, Vanessa and I and Sophie and the producer, the directors, we, all, we, we spent a lot of time thinking about it. But I think for me, honestly, when you have a project like this come along and you're offered to show run something like this I could just see it I could see it I could hear it we could feel it I think we all could um so when it came to music it it made no sense for us to have a classical Hans Zimmer score that that didn't represent the stories right. at all we wanted a female composer and we wanted it to be in a more modern space and then and then naturally the idea of global artists came up as needle drop um, moments to help us do the storytelling which is sort of you know borrowed from drama as a technique and mm. um, and then you write and then you're suddenly you're writing for Angela Bassett and then that brings a whole new level to things and I don't know Queens has just always had its own vibe it's always had yeah. its own identity and, and we were so lucky to be able to run with it it's been creatively the most freeing thing I think I've I've ever done um, you know you don't get to make shows like this in this space very often uh, and um, 
it's it's wonderful to step back and look at it now and go actually do you know at no point was this watered down at any point I think we just asked for more and people kept saying yeah go for it great mm -hmm. so we did you know that's amazing Faith your journey has been so interesting because you started I believe as a field producer on episode one but then you directed the final episode which is so illuminating um what was that process like for, for you Ah, uh, it was all of the things, and I think it, it captures the the spirit of the journey really, um, because it was a, a genuine intention in doing something different. In 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 any, um, especially in film and TV, to to um to have the arc that I've had is unbelievable. You you don't right. in one project you never go from field director to producer director. It just it doesn't happen, but. Because the um the intention for and the vision for the for the team was this needs to be different, it needs to be feel it needs to feel different. And it was in mm -hmm. lip service. And I was in the field with Sophie and I'm picking her brain and she's got all day for me. I'm asking the questions, I'm growing, I'm learning. Um, and then um I've got, you know, Chloe and Vanessa also giving me time on the editorial side of things with chatting story and um and and it was it was such a personal thing because they could see I'm growing. Um, so it yeah. wasn't, yeah, um, it was it wasn't something that's happening in a in a vacuum on location in Kenya. It it was just per permeating through the whole team. And I think something that was quite striking for me is I was on location with Sophie, and we've got this whole Selenge thing playing out. And um, I'm dealing with the producer director from the first episode, and I'm telling her everything that's happening. And I didn't even know that you know she's feeding it back to Chloe, she's feeding it back to Vanessa. And when I finally came to England, Chloe talked to me about selling it like she knew what was happening. And, and that blew my mind because your boss never knows the little things that are happening on location. It just never, she doesn't have the time. I mean, most bosses don't have the time, but in our team, there was that personal, it was, it was a journey where we were holding hands and just going through it together. And when I was finally offered um, to produce um, direct this final episode Chloe and I were actually on the final shoot for Savannah Queens the first episode and she mentioned that her and Vanessa had been chatting and they wanted to offer it to me and then um, Chloe says this as if I needed any more convincing and she's yeah. like Talk about it this way you'll be making a film about your friends because at that point Aww. you know Sophie and I have a friendship I've got a friendship with everyone else that's featured on it yeah. and I mean at that point I'm excited but then I felt man I need to really throw myself into this because it's a, it's a massive um, punt that they took on me. You know, the trust to to say we trust that you've been on this journey and you can yeah bring this across the finish line. So it's just been unbelievable, unreal, and probably never going to have anything like this ever again. Um, so just trying to soak it all in as it's unfolding. For the record, she didn't say yes straight away. Then I had to actually chase her up for her yes. She's like, oh, didn't I tell you yes at the time? I was like, no, you didn't. You left me hanging for a good few weeks. I couldn't I mean, be too eager. Fun. I had to think yeah, yeah. about, it. about yeah. it. But you know, my favorite was, episode. Yeah. And because it, and it, it's, it's because it's authentic, because it was obvious to Vanessa and I that if we were going to do <sighs> a, an episode about the making of Queens, then it had to be one of the Queens telling the story I mean and and Faith's voice is is it's ever, all the way through that episode yeah she, it's it's hers you know yeah. no no risk was taken on I can guarantee that Faith you were uh -huh. uh, choice uh, for only it. when you didn't say yes for a while and thought who else <laughs> would get yeah I was like Chloe what did you say explain <laughs> 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 it yeah. <laughs> what I loved about that episode is the way you you that whole thing about the 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 women rangers in Amboseli and oh. it just makes me chuckle every time as they go into the village and they're like we can get information out of the of the women <laughs> that no one else will share with the other and so it's like the secret yes. they're all sitting Gosh. there with the babies and my heart just fills up every time I see it it's so beautiful yeah I mean, they, they, and I think the beautiful thing about the the whole um, episode is representing um, the fact that you can just be a, an average, and I don't mean average in a negative way, just a normal person, and you can absolutely make a difference. And you see that clearly with with the team Linus Rangers, is you don't have oh, to yeah. change the world, but you can change the world you're in, your sphere of influence, and that hopefully that spreads and trickles out. 
Mm -hmm. that's with the bonobos. I mean, that, that's an amazing story you covered. The, the mm -hmm. women rescue the bonobos and, and you see that's literally saving their lives um, and yeah, sometimes having sure. their own lives saved. Oh. So, such a powerful story. Mm. Oh my God. I love their smiles when they're getting those baths. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And Tanya sitting up a tree, calm as a cucumber, covered in bees, yeah. rain thundering down, and just sort of going, it's great to be small. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, she's so right. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, that badass, takes a right? special person. <laughs> yeah. Great badassery going on. I, and I that. never thought yeah. about that, Sophie, of course, because you're at the other end of the yeah, rain no, three <laughs> platforms are my idea of hell <laughs> but I don't fit all in there I, I, know, I, I don't like lights. filming in forests and jungles <laughs> I'm not made for them That's I did love excuse, the anyway uh, yeah I did love that contrast of her up there in that tree and then you're with the camera with your shoes off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is so oh. me. That's so true. Well, we've all got mm -hmm. our different ways of doing it. I guess it's that's the truth of it, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Um, Vanessa, what do you think people will find the um, like the most shocking part of the series? Um... I think that people will be look. I've, I've worked on many. I've filmed many of these species over the years, mm -hmm. and I can honestly say, um, for big landmark shows that there's so much new stuff in here. Every single yeah. show has amazed me with what the team brought back. I was almost a bit cynical of something like the elephant film because I <laughs> worked on quite a few. And I was like, okay, you know, show me that you're going to actually have something new. And the stuff yeah. that the team had every turn was a surprising and more emotional. And it was just that sort of, that flip, um, like Sophie was saying earlier of, um, moving the camera away from the obvious overt masculine behaviors and just having the courage yeah. that we've had to just sit quietly with these these females mm. and it really paid off so I think audiences will just be surprised they won't have seen these stories before um, and I think the overall feeling will I hope be that more people watch this and go oh this is for me wildlife shows are for me as well mm. Um, and and see themselves in it and feel um, that it can be something that they can enjoy because I I feel like natural history in the past has super served certain audiences of you know very enthusiastic people nice. there's been a, a few very dominant voices and the style has been dictated by that so I I think that actually although the overall style was fresh and innovative and different each show feels different it, each show has its own personality yeah. its own leader that you identify with or you hate you know like gangster yeah. granny walker who's just horrendous in terms of what she'll do for her precious son but you know still a very impressive female matriarch um and i i, I think people will take different things from different shows and hopefully the sort of people that would never watch wildlife normally will go hey i enjoyed that I think it breaks stereotypes on the animals too like before I was never like really into hyenas but then when you learn something about her um ability to consent to sex or not you're like oh my god now I love them <laughs> like I it's, it's like I'll never look at them the same like there's just so much more respect that I didn't realize they deserved uh because I thought well you know you you put some of these animals into a box and then you realize oh uh, that's just me being so you know now reminded about them and I think that's an incredible thing to learn about the series from the series Absolutely. that um, delights me because I'm a complete you know team yay all the way the high yeah, <laughs> extraordinary brilliant <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um the there's a lot of emotion and stress that goes into these stories especially when you get attached to the animals and so I wanted to end on you know, what do you hope the series will inspire in an audience? Um, and is there any specific call to action? Wow. I think Faith, Faith always says something lovely about this. You say this at the end of episode seven, which always just makes me well, every single time. But <laughs> you say something lovely there. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I could quote myself from that, if I can remember. Um, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> Yeah, essentially... Um, I, I want people to feel how I felt about Selenge because if if they if they do, then we'll have lots of people who are in love doing something about the things they love because you can't 
um, uh, change anything if you don't love it. And uh, to love it, you need to know it. So we're hoping that people will be inspired to watch more content like this, this especially people who don't live close to national parks or anything where there's, mm. there's wildlife. But for me personally, I'm hoping people who would have never seen themselves working in this industry will be inspired. They'll see that if if I can do it, this random girl from a small town in Kenya can be involved in such a massive project, then they can do it. And beyond that, not just, you know, making content like this, but um, camera women, we want engineers, people yeah. designing cameras, future cameras, futuristic things. Um, just people sparked for conservation really is, is yeah, my greatest ambition for, for this, yeah, for this series. Love that. And I can ask, is that like a Queen Spotify playlist? Because like you said, the music is so badass. Yeah, there certainly is. Yeah, on there Spotify, is. you can find the Queen's right. playlist. And the, that. and the original soundtrack from our amazing composer, Morgan Kibbe, which is oh, so, fantastic. so brilliant. So yeah, you can go and have your uh, kitchen dance party, Queen's kitchen dance <laughs> Well, thank you so much for all of you being here. I wish we had more time. Um, but I do want to share again that the series will be streaming on Disney Plus and Hulu. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here. This was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Natalie. It's been lovely.